man, look at all this in my suit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> when the closer you come to Christ, brighter things get. You're going to see more things, and that's actually a sign you're walking towards the light. Amen. So you don't get discouraged by that. Um, are we ready for the mm -hmm. next point? Yeah. Denying the inspiration and authority of the spirit of prophecy. Now, I know if there are people out there listening now, and I'm sure there are, that are not Seventh-day Adventists, they're thinking, oh, you guys are putting the writings of Ellen White on the same par with the Bible. No, we don't. Now, there may be people out there that do that, but uh, it's not approved. There are Lutherans that probably put the writings of Luther above the Bible, and there are Methodists that probably put John Wesley above the Bible, but that's just their problem. Um, Ellen White said, the final authority is the Word of God. Our teaching is the Bible. In the baptismal vows that we've gone over with people thousands of times, it says that the Bible is the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian. But God still uses the gifts of the Spirit, and He speaks through prophets and prophetess. And in our church, we saw the evidence, biblical uh, trademarks of the gift of prophecy in Ellen White's work, and there's authority to that. Dismissing that, we see, I've often seen, matter of fact, by the way, this list, this dirty dozen, they're not in sequential order of priority necessarily. Uh, I've often noticed one of the first earmarks of a church that is slipping is they're being dismissive of the spirit of prophecy. Pretty soon, they're not a lot different between, uh, it's just the Seventh-day Evangelical pretty soon. And just in my observation, that's what I've seen. Now, of course, Revelation 12, 17. I was just going to mention that. The dragon was enraged with the woman, went to make war with the remnant of his seed, those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus. Testimony of Jesus in Revelation 19, 10 says it's the spirit of prophecy. And one of the gifts that God gives to the church, both at the, you can read about in the early days of the Christian church, the first century, was the gift of prophecy. And we know that before Jesus comes, you're going to have another special outpouring of the Holy Spirit. You'd expect the Holy Spirit to give the gifts that he has promised, one of which is the gift of prophecy. And we can see that in the movement, the Advent movement from the very beginning, we can see God leading through the gift of prophecy, through the ministry of Ellen White. Every time God has done something significant in Bible history, he's um, set a prophet in advance whether it's Moses before the Exodus or Jeremiah before the Babylonian captivity, John the Baptist before Jesus' coming, it would seem strange before the climax of the Bible history he had no unique message of a prophet. This is not to add to or take away from Scripture. Scripture is a complete separate uh, sacred volume. But God still gives the gifts of the Spirit. And Jesus said in the last days, watch out for false prophets. He never said there would be no prophets. He said watch out for the false ones, which means somewhere there must be the true ones. And Paul says the gift of prophecy, 1 Corinthians 14, is still a gift in the church long after the resurrection. So uh, all, everyone is loath to say somebody's a prophet because you automatically they're suspect because there's so many false prophets. But you know, the Pastor, like Bible just says don't that. despise. The, the, uh, Jehoshaphat said, hear his prophets and prosper. prosper. Yeah. Absolutely. And of course you test everything that a so-called prophet uh, has to say by the word of God. I'm reminded of Ellen White's last um, sermon to the General Conference, the World Session, and the story goes that at the end uh, she had finished her, her sermon, her discussion, and she turned to walk back to her seat, and then almost as if she, she remembered something, she turned around and she came back to the podium and she had the Bible that she was preaching from, and with a trembling voice she held the Bible up to the leaders there gathered of the Seventh Avenue Church, and she said, Brethren, I commend to you this book. Mm -hmm. And then she repeated it, I commend to you this book. She and wasn't holding up her book. No, she was holding up the Word of God. And um, a true prophet will always point back to the Word of God. Yeah, they, they don't exalt themselves. And uh, if you ever read the step, uh, book Steps to Christ, that's one of the greatest books. Uh, let me read something she said, though warning us about the last days on this subject. And we're under point number five, denying the inspiration and authority of the spirit of prophecy. The very last deception of Satan will be to make of none effect the testimony of the spirit of God. Where there's no vision, the people perish. Satan will work ingeniously in different ways and through different agencies to unsettle the confidence of God's remnant people in the true testimony. And, you know, it's, it, it's almost a, a diabolical 
the supernatural effort that has gone into the internet in creating anti-spirit of prophecy websites. And I look at the information they've got and it is just totally bogus, but people looking for the first time don't know that. And they've been uh, misled, discouraged. Folks come to an evangelistic meeting and they're just so moved by the teachings and then they run into one of these websites and, uh, and it's not always on the websites. Uh, sometimes it's actually members that say, oh, don't worry about that, don't pay attention to that. And it's a downplay. That's something, an area where I think we need revival. You know, Pastor Doug, let me just uh, interject a question. I think it's an important one. And maybe it's a good time for us to ask this. Uh, somebody wrote in and asked, what about the backslidden Christian? Is it too late for me? Oh, no, I think, you know, until probation closes, that um, the very fact a person's asking that question seems like the Spirit might be moving on their hearts. It's the Holy Spirit that even brings conviction. And so, you know, um, the, when the plagues start to fall, probation probably will have closed at that point. But until then, then uh, yeah, I, I believe the Holy Spirit, God is so much more patient than we are. Sometimes we would have given up on ourselves long before and we think, how could God still, after repeat fail failure over and over again, how could He still have mercy on me? And He's very merciful. You know, for those who might have just joined us along the way, we mentioned this at the beginning, we do have a free offer that we want to encourage folks to take a look at a book entitled Compromise, Conformity, and Courage. And we'll be happy to send this to anyone who calls and asks. Let me give you the number. I know we're not done yet, but just in case somebody just tuned in. If you'd like to receive the book, you can text the word COURAGE to the number 40544, or you can call 877 232 2871 and ask for offer number 774. Pastor Doug, I believe you can also read this uh, right now online at the Amazing Facts website. Yeah, it's under the uh, free bookstore section, absolutely. Well, we're about halfway done, Pastor Ross. Number six is, um, uh, oh, I already read this one. Uh, uh, number six, doubting the sanctuary message and the significance of 1844. Uh, seven